What is up, Midway Mayhem fans? This is Dan, and we are checking back in from the Universal Orlando Resort, and I know it's been a couple weeks since we've been here, but I promise you the wait will be worth it, as there's a lot of things that have been going on for the new Harry Potter roller coaster, Jurassic Park ride, and possibly Pokemon attraction. A lot to see and do, so let's go. First stop of the day is gonna be over here where Emeralds used to be, and I'm not seeing too much different. Just a couple things here and there, a little bit of the wood. First stop of the day is gonna be over here at the former Emeralds location, and remember, the rumored trademark name for this is Big Fire Grill. Haven't heard anything more on it, and we haven't seen too much on the outside of the building here, except for just a couple odds and ends, but we'll walk around. Looks like we have some work walls up around the Lone Palm Airport, aka Margaritaville's outdoor patio. It should be up and back in order very soon. All right, let's start the rumor mill. I see a marker right here out front of Islands of Adventure. It's got to be for the Giga Coaster over 300 feet, right? It's got to be. The last couple of weeks we've had Halloween Horror Nights and it's been pretty busy, but right now, not too busy. Literally no way to get through security or through the front entrance today. It's going to be a good day. Let's head on in. And right off the bat, we can see a bunch of holiday decorations are up here at Islands of Adventure. It looks really nice, especially the bridge right here where it says the adventure begins. We have garland and wreaths and lights all the way over here. Again, front entry. It's going to look really pretty at night. Like usual, we gotta check up on the wait times here, and the park is open until 7 p.m. Hulk currently is a 40 minute wait, Storm Force is a five minute wait, Doctor Doom 30 minutes, Spider-Man 15, Bluto is 20 minutes, Kong 25 minutes, P-Flyer is 40 minutes, Forbidden Journey is 30 minutes. On the next page we have, let's see, Poseidon Security 30 minutes, Parasucel five minutes, Seuss Trolley was 25, one fish, two fish, five minutes. Not exactly a busy day, great day to be here. Frenchmas! It's taken over Seuss Landing again this year, and it looks pretty good. And we have the addition of two new LED trees. And this whole area at night is already very bright. This is only going to make it better. It's still daytime out, but we have some lighting tests going on with the new LED trees. Again, the whole area just decked out with decorations. Looks awesome. Garland around one fish, two fish. The Grinchmas show will return again. We don't have times just yet, but when it starts, check Universal Orlando's website, the park maps, and of course, the little TVs with the wait times.
And I'm gonna assume, just like prior years, that over here at Dr. Seuss's All the Books You Can Read, we're gonna have the Grinch from Meet and Greet. Still no update for Honk Honkers, which is where the candy floss was. Doors are closed. And the same goes for the main entry. Just checking on the former Sinbad location and there's nothing new to report. No changes, still work walls up and ropes. We'll let you know if anything changes. I will say this, I am surprised to see the fire is still on and they're spending the money on it. Same with this side, pyro is still on over here. <laughs> dun, 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 it is time to talk about the Jurassic Park roller coaster and first thing I wanted to point out is the flames are still on here for the entry sign that's good but let's go talk about some of the new developments about the ride itself nothing really new to see across from the Discovery Center no buoys in the water and no clearing of trees just yet The sediment barriers are still in place over here at the overflow slash employee bridge and I'm not seeing that buoy in the water again. It was there in previous updates, it was gone in the last one, and it has not returned. Now some things have been said about it being slowed down or the project has been delayed. Don't know about that one, maybe just a little bit, who knows, but I am thinking as soon as Potter Coaster is wrapping up, we're going to see a lot of work going on for the Jurassic Park roller coaster. Looks like all is quiet over here. Some of the same markings from previous updates are still here. I'm not seeing any new additions. We did see some new paint on here from the last one, right there next to the blue. Hopefully, we'll find some more. I don't know, maybe it's my mind playing tricks on me, but I don't remember being able to see this much of Hulk from this area right here. And I'm thinking maybe a little bit of brush and land clearing has happened. Not much, but just a little. I think it's a dinosaur, you know? Not really sure if this is new or not, or I missed it in the last update, but we have this white X. Now I know we had that, but the lettering that's right here on the berm, I don't remember that. Well, we really didn't see too much in terms of new markings for the Jurassic Park roller coaster, so let's talk about what we actually know about it. It's going to be a very fast attraction, as in over 75 miles an hour, and it will have one point that's at least over 150 feet tall. It's almost going to be like a top hat element from what we've been hearing. And the style of ride, well, possibly Intamin is going to be the manufacturer. We're thinking a blitz coaster similar to, say, like Maverick or uh, Tehran at uh, Fantasialand. So, fingers crossed, we'll get something like that because Universal could use it. That's right, we've said it before in other updates that this is going to be a very fast roller coaster. In fact, it could be Florida's fastest. Fingers crossed on that one. And the going theme, well, we're thinking it's going to be Velociraptors, as they've been very prominent in the recent films and throughout the whole Jurassic Park franchise. So, could we see Blue? Are we going to have maybe a motorcycle experience? I don't know, we'll see. But again, very fast, and this attraction will have inversions. 
and one part of the ride is even gonna have pretty much like a spaghetti bowl. We're thinking lots of over and unders all over the place. And remember, for a good portion of this ride, it's not gonna be very tall, as in pretty much the tree line is gonna be the height as it heads towards the Harry Potter area. It is gonna cross out over the water right in here. There's gonna be some footers over there, but the tallest part is gonna be over here by Popeyes. So pretty much where those palm trees are, looking straight up, that's gonna be one of the tallest elements. And then the spaghetti bowl is gonna be back over there where the Triceratops encounter was. Now remember, the games will be relocated, but to where? Well, we're thinking right over here might be a good spot. Nothing new to report deconstruction-wise over here at the former Triceratops encounter location. Hopefully soon, in the next couple months, we'll see something. I'm kind of thinking that they want these walls to come down eventually, and if the games come over here with the new addition of the ride, well, that'll happen. The Raptor Encounter over here with Blue, again, has been a great addition to the park, so much that the park wants to keep it. That means this location will be closing down eventually, a new spot's gonna open up, somewhere right over by the pizza place. So how do we know that that's gonna happen? Well, recently, permits have been filed for work behind the pizza place, and we've seen some markings over by the Jurassic Park River Adventure Ride. All sources are pointing to over here for the new location. This, however, is a bit different, and I'm not sure if it's good news or not, but we used to have some work walls over here surrounding this Triceratops encounter, but they're gone now. Again, we're thinking the entry for the new Raptor encounter is gonna be over here next to the River Adventure, maybe over there in that section, or maybe over here in the overflow. Camp Jurassic now, I'm not gonna go hunting, but we did have a viewer send in a tip that more markings have been found over by P-Flyers. Again, P-Flyers is gonna be staying, but that's good, at least some new markings have been found. Directly across from Thunder Falls Terrace, we have work walls up around the drink stand. Should return again soon. Oh, hey, look, a brand new Jurassic Park work in progress sign. Hmm, just one. I wonder if there's gonna be any others soon. Hello, Hogsmeade. Let's see what is new with you and your Harry Potter roller coaster. Garland is up around the outside to Hogsmeade, and I'm sure there's a bunch of holiday decorations inside. Butterbeer surrounded in Garland. Yep, some of the decorations are up now inside Hogsmeade with the wreaths, Garland, and the lights. It's really pretty. I'm expecting that we're going to have the projection mapping show again on Hogwarts Castle with the snow and everything this year. A festive tree located right here next to the Frog Choir stage. Even the Hogsmeade train station has been decked out with some holiday decor.
got trees? Well, the new Harry Potter roller coaster does, as it's really filled in in the last couple weeks. Not too long ago, we could see a building. Now we can't. Well, that was pretty cool. We saw a lot of changes to the Harry Potter roller coaster, new theming around the entire site. But enough of that. Time to head on the Hogwarts Express and head over to studios. We've arrived at King's Cross Station. We can see there's not too bad of a wait over here to head over to Islands of Adventure. Normally this thing is packed. Decorative lights, garland, and bulbs now line the King's Cross Station. Looks pretty nice. Diagon Alley, again with all the garland and lights, looks phenomenal. Lucky for us, there's something new to talk about here inside Diagon Alley, and that is Globus Mundi, which is the travel agency for, of course, witches and wizards. Let's go take a look, shall we? So as we enter, first thing I see, a whole bunch of posters here saying visit Scotland, New York, City of Magic, Amazon, Japan. We do have uh, Harry Potter merchandise with house backpacks, Slytherin, Gryffindor, Hufflepuffs, Ravenclaws, all them. Looks very nice. Luggage tags as well. 
We have some of the famous brooms up there. Looks really kind of neat. Clocks up on the wall as well. And then more posters on the wall over here. Again, Paris, London, Scandinavia, Uganda. Looks really cool. Inside here we have uh, trains, replicas of the Hogwarts Express, pillows, t-shirts for the kids, throw blankets, hoodies, cups and mugs, steins all over the place. Little hats, scarves, more mugs and shirts. A lot of different options at least for uh, merchandise here. More hoodies over here. Again, Lobus Monday there. Casings up there. Globe as well. A lot of detail went into here. It actually looks pretty nice. So Ticket office. Yeah, travel information as well. So again, day passages to New York. Has the different times. Outbound and return as well. And different ones Saturdays and Sundays. Important information. Don't forget the uh, night bus. Would not be good to be stuck. <laughs> and more merchandise over here. Jewelry. Stockings. Ornaments over here. More train stuff. That looks really neat. Check out that. That's a neat little luggage tag. And more blankets. That's going to do it for Globus Monday. Kind of a neat little hidden Easter egg. We have the posters that are made by somebody by the name of Mina Lima. Well, guess what? On the clocks, there she is. which currently has a 20 minute wait, has also been decorated. It looks pretty nice. Well, let's check up on the wait times here at Studios and the Park is also open until 7. Despicable Me, 20 minutes. E.T., 20 minutes. Fast and Furious, 15 minutes. Transformers 5 minutes, Mummy is 30 minutes. We do have Twirl and Hurl at 5 minutes also. Trek 40, 10 minutes. Hogwarts Express, 15 minutes. And guess what? We have Cinematic Celebration also going on right now. is all done and that means Fear Factor is back here at its normal location. Academy of Villains gave it a good run and I hope they return next year. So yeah, the Fear Factor sign has been uncovered again and the show is going on for now. Rumors are that it may be leaving within the next couple years. We shall see. While no shows have been scheduled just yet as they're getting the stage ready to go again, very soon, very soon. No Men in Black during this update. Sorry guys, maybe next time. I don't know about you guys, but it makes me kind of sad knowing that Horror Nights is gone and we gotta wait almost another year for it to return. All right, so let's talk about Kid Zone for a quick second and it is highly rumored that we're gonna be getting a Pokemon attraction. In fact, the name is supposed to be Pokemon Snap Safari, which is an interactive ride. You go through collecting Pokemon. Theoretical capacity is supposed to be somewhere around 1550. Actual capacity around 1450. Dispatch time is supposed to be around 28 seconds. 
Showtime is around four minutes and the actual ride cycle is about five minutes. Now you're gonna be going through different areas like a ghost cavern, crystal caves, grasslands, jungle, water vortex, and the like. Of course, this is an e-ticket attraction and there's other rumors of other things coming here involving Pokemon as well. Possibly even a show where you may battle other Pokemon. Interesting. But we'll keep you informed as to what happens. And located directly next to Kid Zone is a photo opportunity spot for the new movie that just came out, The Grinch. No! All the pumpkins from the harvest have been replaced with ice skulls, but I'm okay with that. I actually like the way they look. And of course we have decorative garland and lights along the fence. I will say this, it feels a little weird not seeing all the decorations for Chucky or seeing Mel's die-in. Anybody up for a quick look at the prop shop? Well, I am. Let's go take a look and see what's new. So right off the bat, I'm seeing some garland and different things for uh, decorations for the holidays. And as soon as we walk in here, again, all the stuff for the Triceratops still here. We have volcano based stuff as well. We've seen it before, hasn't left. Again, all the uh, Horror Night stuff over here looks to be about the same. Seeing the Embarcadero sign right there. Creepy Chance, one of them. Here, right there, all the mummy stuff. Again, still here, it is on the table, ready to go home. The other Creepy Chance that used to be over here is gone. We're now seeing event offerings. Triple Decker Extravaganza, so that's from this year, 2018. You can see the waffles right there. Waffle Strawberry Shortcake, Waffle Bananas Foster, and the Holiday Tree Light Cupcake. Around the corner over here, see if there's anything else new. Signage looks to be about the same. The dude that was posing is no longer here right now. Volcano Bay sign right there, that looks kind of new. Other stuff from Mardi Gras, looks to be about the same. Nothing really new here. We'll go around the corner. A lot of the same stuff, seeing, let's see, a lot of the photos are about the same. Some of the signage up here is new. Loaded and tasty, that's new over there. The Wakita sign, still here. Again, with all the uh, mummy signage as well, some of it has not left. This is definitely new. Universal City Walk loading dock, authorized service and delivery vehicles only. And that one, $125 for that prop. Well, that's a huge sign. Other Mardi Gras stuff over here. And Halloween Horror Nights cold drink sign. And that one is uh, 200 bucks. Pasta sign is still here as well. Pharaoh's Gold also has not left. Along with the uh, different stuff from Disaster. Still have that Universal sign here as well. That is not left. 
and some of the other things from uh, Terminator. That's going to do it at least for the prop shop during this visit. All right, I lied. There's more stuff here inside the prop shop. We have signed photos from some of the cast members from Stranger Things. $200 a pop. Come get them. Still not much to talk about when it comes to the former Terminator location, although we have heard that there's been some work going on inside the building. A lot of banging, cutting, sawing. So hopefully we'll get an announcement very soon as to what the replacement is going to be. Yep, there's your proof. We do have Christmas in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter going on from November 17th through January 6th. Of course, all the Halloween Horror Nights decorations are now down and we have the holiday decorations up. Well guys, that is going to do it for another update here from the Universal Orlando Resort where we saw the Harry Potter roller coaster had a bunch of new theming all over the entire construction site. Of course, a lot of buildings are going up, including Hagrid's Hut, which looks like it has received a little bit of damage. Interesting. Jurassic Park roller coaster again should be on track as far as timing. Maybe just a little delay here or there. But we have some new information in regards to how it could possibly be. Hopefully, maybe a Maverick style ride by Intamin Again, extremely fast, the fastest coaster in Florida, fingers crossed. We checked out Globus Mundi, which is the travel shop over in Diagon Alley. We also went over to the Pokemon attraction, Pokemon Snap Safari, rumored that we're going to get that, and we talked about some of the different lands involved in that attraction. Of course, we will keep you updated on that and more attractions coming here to the Universal Orlando Resort. So if you like what we do, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at Midway Mayhem, and I will see you out on the Midway.